Hello students and welcome to this video for Word Chapter 3 mid-level exercise number one. We're on page 325 in your textbook. So page 325 and we're starting with exercise number one, mid-level uh, football statistics. As a communication specialist for the Midwest Athletic Conference, you are preparing a summary of football statistics for inclusion in material published by the conference. Specifically, you highlight stats from the offensive units of leading teams in the conference. A word table is an ideal way to summarize those statistics so you prepare and populate several tables. Where appropriate, you include formulas to summarize the table data. The tables must be attractively formatted, so you use words design and bordering tools as well. So step A, it says to open up this file right here. So Word Chapter 3, M1 Football, and we're going to save it with our last name and first name attached. So I'm going to click File, Save As, choose Browse. Remember to select the right folder. So right now I'm in Downloads. I need to switch to the folder I'm saving in, and you're going to switch to your flash drive. So word 03M1 football and then underscore your last name, first name. And that's step A of our exercise. Step B, select text in the document from the number sign in the top left corner to 13.1 in the bottom right corner. So basically we're selecting this whole group of text here. So from the number sign all the way down here to 13.4. And then it says here, to convert text to table. If you remember, we go to the Insert tab, we choose Table, and then we come down here to Convert Text to Table. And then we're going to select OK. If you selected it the right way, it should show the right number of columns and such. So everything's in a column and a row. All right, change page orientation to layout, if you remember, or excuse me, landscape. If you remember, that's in our Layout tab right here, this normal one. We're clicking orientation and changing it to landscape. So portrait, remember, is up and down. Landscape is left and right. It's usually the easy way to remember that. Change the font of the second and third lines. So Midwest Athletic Conference and then Season Statistics. So the second and third lines here, the text. So up here, these two. And we're changing the font to, it says here, Cambria 16. So I'll go to my home tab. I'm going to type it in here, Cambria. I push enter, and then we're changing it to 16. And there we go. Now it looks the way it needs to. Then, next thing we're going to do here, uh, it says step C, delete column 1. So column 1, that's our first column, this one right here. So what I can do is I can just click in the column, and I go to the Layout tab here under Table Tools, and I choose Delete and Delete Column. So now it's left me with just the team. Change the font on the table data to Cambria 10 points. So the way I can do it is I can just click my table move handle. It'll select the whole table. Then I click on the home tab, type in here for the font Cambria, and then it says here to change it to 16. So or not 16, excuse me, 10. 10. I push enter after I type it in. It says auto fit the contents of the table. So I believe we can right click yes and it shows up here auto fit and then it says auto fit to contents right here we can click on that and you could always choose the layout tab to um, and choose auto fit from here alright step D ensure that no team names in column one are bold or underlined so you can see here um, these ones are set up that way so I could go through um, and choose Excuse me, let's get rid of that here. All my wonderful notifications are coming up. Um, I can go to the Home tab and do it that way of getting rid of it manually. I'm going to actually do it this way. I'm going to select this text here, and then I'm going to choose Format Painter. I'm going to double click on it, and now it changes it. I can go to each one and just do it this way. So I would select a word of text that doesn't have that has the formatting how you want, and then double click on Format Painter. And you can see I'm just going and clicking through each one doing it, I could actually have gone through and just selected the whole column almost um, and done it that way. But now you can see it looks the right way. I click on Format Painter to disengage it or deselect it, and now it looks how it needs to for Step D. All right, Step E, insert a row above row 1 in the table. So I'm going to click up here in row 1. I go up here to Table Tools, Layout tab. So Table Tools, Layout tab, and I choose Insert 
above because it wants us to put a row above row one complete the following steps to populate and format the next row so we're gonna type in some stuff here basically is what it means I'll move my mouse away so you have a wide perspective of it type offensive statistics in the first cell of the next row type rushing statistics in the next cell of the first row so basically you're just pushing tab after each one and it says select the second third fourth and sixth cells of the first row and merge it so right here it says second let's do this here so I'll change it to the black arrow here second third fourth fifth and sixth I believe so these ones right here so all the way to comp basically are the ones I select and it says merge the selected cells so we're gonna merge them and then it says align the rushing statistics in the center of the merged cell so we gotta align it so here's my alignment tab right here so we're gonna align it we'll actually press center it doesn't really make a difference between the two but we'll do for now in case we change it later type passing statistics in the next excuse me next cell so passing statistics select the cell containing passing to passing statistics is the fun word and the next three cells of the first row so this one right here I click and I need one two three and it looks like that for the ones I have selected and merge the cells so I go up here and merge them and then it says align passing statistics in the center of the merge cell so I line it up again same way so it looks like this and then merge the remaining cells on row one so I'm gonna select the remaining cells on row one you notice I move it to it becomes a little black arrow like that and I'm gonna merge the cells and then it says type total in the merge cell so I'll click in my merge cell here type total and then I'm going to center the word total so centering it again so it should look like this after all said and done with step E step F it says insert a row between Harkinsville and Dakota State so we need to find Harkinsville and Dakota State it looks like it's about it's right up here so in between the two so I can click on Harkinsville choose I could either go and move to the left here and do the insert indicator or I could choose insert below or above I'm gonna go to the left here and do that I've just inserted the row and it says type the following data so I'm gonna type it in you can look at your textbook or type it as I do it along you'll notice this first part is capitalized I push tab after each one to move along we've been doing this for a while so hopefully you've already been in the mindset of doing that I'm gonna type it in and I'll check it once I'm completely finished here you can check it as you go along or do as I'm doing here okay so we've got this row right here we just typed in James College it's this row of numbers so I'm gonna look over it very quickly here okay and it looks correct um, I'm gonna save it here in the middle of it you can do that too otherwise we're gonna keep going here step G select the table style of the grid uh, table style so we're going to the design tab of table tools we're going to click on the more arrow in the table styles group so we can look at all our different styles it says grid table 5 dark accent 2 so it says row 5 column 3 um, where there is no row 5 so you're gonna have to just look here grid table 5 dark Here's grid table five dark. I need accent two. Hang on, I need to take away. Uh, the only problem with the magnifier is sometimes I can't see these um, the hints that come up, so I can check. That's accent one. Okay, grid table five dark accent two. So um, let me bring up the magnifier again, and I'll show you. 
So if you look at it here, it's that one. So three rows, three columns, easy way to find it. That's how you get it. So I have that. Then it says select all the table text. So I just click up here on the move handle. That's one of the quickest ways to get all the table text. Then it says apply a pen color. So over here we're going to pen color in our borders group. We're still on the design tab. Pen color, it says orange accent to darker 50%. Lighter here, darker 25, and here's darker 50%. So it's that one right here. Okay, uh, with a line weight of half a point, that's already set to it, so we're good to go on that. And a line style of a single line, so we're checking that. That looks good. Apply, oh, excuse me, yeah. select, and a line style single to the outside borders. So I can actually click, instead of using the border painter, I can click borders and then choose outside borders and it does it for me creates that line alright it says step 8 select an orange double line border style so orange double line so we're getting our first double line here border style and apply it to the border along the horizontal line separating row 1 from row 2 so I'm gonna go between row 1 and row 2 I click in here you may need to zoom in to do this easier so thankfully with the magnifier, it kind of does that for me. So I did it between row one and row two, that double line. And also along the vertical line, separating the first column from the second. So um, I'm doing it along here as well. So you can see right here, from here I went to that, and then from here to here, making it look very nice. All right, step I, move to the end of the document. So control end to move to the end of the document. Press enter twice, and then it says insert a 3 by 5 table, a 3 by 5. So three columns, five rows. So insert table, 3 by 5. And you can tell up here it even shows it. So the first number is how many columns, the second number is rows. So I click that, insert the table here, and I'm going to type in uh, the info that has here on the page. I'll move my mouse so you can see it as I type. Be careful not to push enter like I just did. Double check for errors as you go in case you actually type it in wrong. We've typed in the information. Um, it looks to be correct. All right, next thing we're going to do here, step J, change the column width of all columns in the table to 1.5. So I'm going to go click here. Let's go to the layout. It says column width. So we're dealing with the width right here to 1.5. So I'm just going to click here. I'll erase the number 3, type 1.5, and push Enter. Oh, you know what? I need to actually select my whole table and do that. So 1.5, quotation marks, enter. And then center all entries in the last two columns. So I'm going to select, oh, let me try this again, select the last two columns here, and we're going to center the entries. All right, step K, we're almost done with the first page here. Um, it's only about a page and a half, which is nice. Insert a blank row at the top of the table. So I'm going to click up here in the first row. Click Insert Above. It says complete the following steps. Type Receiving Yards. If I can type it here, Receiving Yards. In the row, first cell of row 1, change the font size. So let's select this here, home tab, two, it says 14 point. And then also says merge all cells on row one. So I'm going to select. Remember, you got to select which cells you want to merge. If you don't select them, 
it's not going to give you the option to do that. I click, so I select them all, click on the layout tab, and I choose merge cells. All right, ensure that receiving yards is centered, which it is. All right, step L. We're on next page here, 326. Shade the first row with orange accent to 60% lighter. So shade the first row. We've got our first row selected. We're going to go here to the Design tab and choose the Shading button. And it says orange to 60% lighter. I'm going to have to get rid of my magnifier here for a second again so I can actually see it. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's try that again. So I click in here, click in this row, choose Design, Shading, Orange Accent 2, 60% lighter. So it's this one right here. Okay, I'll bring my magnifier back up. <laughs> I'm going to go back and forth today a little bit with it. So it should look like that. Then step M, add a new blank row at the end of the table. So you notice I can actually go down here to the bottom, move to the left, insert indicator. So new blank row at the end of the table. And it says here type average in the first cell of our new row. First cell of our new row. Enter a formula in the last cell of the new row to average all entries in the column above. You do not need to select a number format. So I'm going to click in here. I'm going to go up here to Layout. And then I'm going to go to the Data Group and click on Formula. So I have clicked in this cell here. We're going to average them. Click on Formula. Now you notice it has Sum up here. All we got to do is click after Sum, get rid of Sum using Backspace, and then just type in Average. And you don't have to choose a number format. You just type that in and push Enter. And it has our average for us. All right, step N, align both tables horizontally in the center of the page. So the way we do that, we can right click on our table, choose table properties, and then for alignment, we just choose center and click OK. And then same thing for this one. I click on this table, right click, table properties, center, OK. Very simple, we've done it before. Check for spelling and grammar issues. It's gonna say some of these names are wrong, obviously they're not. And there you go. All right, it says here, change the receiving yards for Calvin Spragans to 1451. So apparently he did a little bit better than we had thought. Update the average to reflect this. I right click on my formula down here and choose update field, and it does it for me. All right, step P, use border painter. We're close here to the end of the exercise. Use border painter to sample the double line border that divides the first and second rows of the table. So use Border Painter to sample. So I'm going to go here to the Design tab. It says go here to Border Painter to sample. OK, so let's see here. To sample the double line border, so we've already got that. That divides the first and second rows and paint it on the border dividing. So just activate your border painter. We already have it set up properly. I just wanted to make sure that. So that's why I was double checking here. And paint it on the borders dividing the first and second rows on the second table. So we're just painting it down here. So it looks like that now. It's kind of helping it match the other table. All right, step Q add a caption below the bottom of the first table. So I'm going to deactivate my border painter. I'm going to click here on this table and then it says here insert the caption below the bottom of the first table. So we go to layout and we're going to actually, excuse me, we're going to references and we're going to choose insert caption from our captions group. It already said below. So we're going to choose below select the table. We got our table one. It's already typed in there for us. And so what we're going to do, you'll notice it doesn't let you get rid of this text. So we're actually going to just um, type in here figure 1 colon Midwest, oh, space Midwest. I'll move my mouse away so you can kind of see the whole thing. Athletic conference, you can see this in your book too, offensive statistics. 
So you can type that in, and then it says, so you can click OK. And then what we're going to do is just click in front of here, figure one, and just push backspace and get rid of table one part. I don't know why Microsoft Word necessarily does that, but that's just how it is. So we added that caption. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to this table two. It says insert a caption for table two as well. And we're typing in, first off, it says below. So we've got set to below. Always check the position first because it's easy to forget after. And then type in figure two, colon, space, total, receiving yards. And then click OK. So we have that there. Get rid of table one again, just like we did before. Okay, so we've got figure one and figure two set up here. It says modify the caption style. So I'm actually going to go here. <gasps> Excuse me. I'm going to click on the dialog box for styles. So I clicked on Home tab. I'm going to go down the caption. Right click on it. Choose the modify. And it says here to modify it so that way um, caption style font should be bold. Okay, first actually it says to include orange accent to it says darker by 50% which is this one right here and then it says caption style font should be bold not italicized so bold not italicized so you can see I've unselected italicized and then also um, centered so you can see it looks like that oh no actually I clicked on the wrong one not this one this one right here centered so it should look like this and then click OK once you have those things selected and now it matches how it should in um, our exercise. Click the Save button. We are almost there. We're so close to the end here. Step R, we're three steps away. Begin a step-by-step -step mail merge. So we get that mail merge again. I'm going to close the Styles dialog box. I'm clicking on Mailings tab. We're starting the mail merge, and we're using that wizard. It says Mail Merge Wizard. We have letters selected. That's what it says we need to do. And you will use the current document. So I select letters, and I click Next. And I make sure it says use current document. And I click next to select recipients. And that says use the existing list. They're located in that list you downloaded. So you're going to go to downloads, go down to W03M2, or excuse me, M1. M1 is what we're working on here. And you're selecting universities. So this file right here is what you're selecting. I had to go to downloads to get it. Click open. It comes up as sheet one. So that's good. Then we're going to click the OK button. Then it says right away we're going to sort the data by source, university. So sort by, you're choosing that. You click on the arrow, scroll down. We choose university. And it should be ascending order, which it is. So sort by university. Then It says here, merge the university field with the source document so that the university name displays after the text de draft prepared for. So um, we're going to click OK because it looks like we got the sort part right. Um, and then it talks about merging the university field with the source data. So let's click OK. So that the university name displays after the text draft prepared for on page one. So we need to put the university name in here. So we're going to go to next part, write your letter. And it's talking about the mail merge here. And it's for, we're going to go with more items. And then we're going to choose university. So that's what that means. So <laughs> right here, insert merge field. And we're choosing that. So you should have university there. I'll show you again. So more items. We are in step four of the merge process. You choose university, click insert, and you're going to click close. So it looks like that. I had to think about that step here for a second. Step T, we're going to save the merge document as football merge last and first. So I'm going to actually save this one first, and then this is where I click on next preview. And of course, it says edit your list, blah, blah. We're fine with that. Then click Next, we're on step six here, and you're going to choose edit individual letters. We click all, click OK, and then it shows letters one, and we can see our university comes up. 
and let's click File, Save As, Browse, and of course you're saving it to where it needs to go. It says Draft Prepared For, we're changing that to W03M1 Football Merge underscore your last name and first name. So that's what you're saving all the letters as and click to close the file. I want you to submit to me this file right here. So you only have to submit one. If you accidentally submit both, that's okay. But submit for sure this one right here, football merge, last and first. And of course, this is how you complete Word Chapter 3 M1. Let me scroll down through it quickly here so you can kind of see an example of the first letter here and the second. So you notice the university shows up different for each one. I've got that information. So good job following along. Great job finishing that exercise. Have a good day.